Hello guys, I welcome all of you to today's farmcast and uh, today guys my purpose is to wish all of you a very very 75th happy independence day right and uh, in guys you know that in life uh, we are always seeking independence from something or the other thing right so currently you guys uh, are going through the rough patch in your life and that is uh, when you prepare for a competitive exam uh, the least thing that can be said is it is a period of Im immense stress and uh, all of you would like to get out of this stress be independent from this period as soon as possible what has made is made it worst is the delay in the exams right but we have to keep uh, our hopes high and keep marching forward right guys so i wish all of you can get independence from all the dark sides that we have and um, portray the brighter side of your life for yourself and others now guys uh, today apart from wishing you guys happy independence day my aim is to discuss one topic which a student uh, rita roy has uh, she had uh, requested me to discuss is uh, antimicrobial drug resistance right so i'll be discussing that as well and at last we'll conclude with uh, one doubt which a student has asked that is uh, sir i have not scored that well right i have a rank uh, like a 5000 to 10000 in between somewhere and what are my prospect in need right if i have got a rank in uh, your ini sat exam which is many thousand like 6000 7000 so i'll talk about that at last so let us begin with guys drug resistance see drug resistance uh, is a, a big topic so i've divided it into two parts and today i'll discuss one half next farm cast uh, i'll discuss the second half right so guys resistance of uh, or two antimicrobial drugs are two types one is intrinsic intrinsic means a microbe uh, has the resistance to a particular class of antibiotic by birth, right? So it, it is what it gets by birth is called as intrinsic. Whereas acquired one, that is second part, is with continuous exposure, some of the microorganisms, they develop certain kind of resistance. So that is acquired one, which I'll discuss in the next farmcast. Today we'll discuss primarily the intrinsic intrinsic mechanism of resistance why some drugs have intrinsic resistance right let us begin with uh, uh, the first class of uh, or first uh, type of intrinsic resistance which is seen with anaerobes so guys anaerobes you know the most important one uh, like bacteroids um, anaerobes uh, aminoglycosides right they they were never effective they will never be effective for treatment of anaerobes like bacteroids so why there is an intrinsic resistance right with anaerobes for aminoglycosides the reason being see what happens is aminoglycosides as a class of drug they need oxygen for their transport through the cell membrane into the cytoplasm where they can act upon protein synthesis now in the absence of oxygen aminoglycosides cannot enter right into a bacteria and there is a problem that happens with anaerobes right you know that there is no oxygen and without uh, oxygen in the anaerobes aminoglycosides cannot enter so anaerobes one class of drug not effective are aminoglycosides second class are quinolones why quinolones are not that effective the reason being anaerobes are born they are born with pumps efflux pumps which can throw the drug out so drug efflux right by birth is what they have got so anaerobes like bacteroids minoglycosides and quinolones are not effective coming to the second one and it's an important one guys gram positive for a gram positive organism you can never use a beta lactam now which one is that guys can you think a little bit which 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 beta lactam am i talking here about which is not active against gram positive right many of you would have got it right it is astyonam right monobactam astyonam now why is it not effective against gram positive the reason being guys the penicillin binding protein or transpeptidase structures are different in case of gram positive and negatives and astyonam has the ability or it has a structure that can bind only to the gram negative 
penicillin binding protein right so it cannot bind to gram positive penicillin binding protein next one is guys enterococcus so enterococcus you know we all harbor enterococcus right in our gut and that becomes a source for nosocomial infection so all of you know that the most common nosocomial infection is staphylococcus that is in the hospitals right second most common is now it is becoming enterococcus and it is a very difficult task to deal with enterococcus because it has intrinsic resistance to a lot of drugs right let, let us see how for example aminoglycosides you can never use aminoglycosides for a gram positive uh, microorganism like enterococcus for any gram positive i cannot use aminoglycosides as a lone drug right there is another part of the story i'll discuss in a short while now why aminoglycosides are not effective the reason being see what happens in case of uh, gram positive organisms the efficacy of uh, aminoglycosides the entry is reduced right because it is mostly a polar polar compound which is difficult it is a water soluble compound and it is difficult for enter into your gram positive organisms now so aminoglycosides uh, will not be using in enterococcus as a lone agent or only agent but you will see that to a lot of uh, drugs which are active against enterococcus right we combine an aminoglycoside for example uh, a drug like uh, ampicillin or a drug like vancomycin i usually combine aminoglycoside in that case when i inhibit the cell wall synthesis no cell wall in that case aminoglycoside can easily enter in the absence of cell wall right it can easily enter through the cell membrane so aminoglycoside would increase the efficacy of uh, a beta lactam right right guys so aminoglycoside role in enterococcus is just add on right now coming to uh, second class which uh, are not active because of a decreased binding to penicillin binding protein right so one example is ampicillin now there is a crux here see guys ampicillin is drug of choice for enterococcus faecalis so it can it can bind to the penicillin binding protein of faecalis but ampicillin cannot bind to the penicillin binding protein of fascium so there is an intrinsic resistance in fascium to ampicillin right so faecalis i can use ampicillin cephalosporin on the other hand they are you know never used for enterococcus the reason being both faecalis and fascium they have a penicillin binding protein to which cephalosporins cannot bind right so in beta lactams guys i can use ampicillin only for uh, faecalis not for fascium cephalosporin I, i cannot use for both so most of the beta lactams they have resistance only one that is used is ampicillin and that is only for enterococcus fascium then we have protein synthesis inhibitors like streptogramin a lincosamide that is clindamycin now intrinsically there is resistance in enterococcus though we do not know what what is the actual mechanism of resistance it is called as lsa lsa means lincosamide streptogramin a resistance what exactly causes resistance we do not know it is suspected to be drug efflux but not confirmed right so enterococcus there is intrinsic resistance to aminoglycosides beta lactams exception is ampicillin which can be used in faecalis protein synthesis inhibitors like streptogramin a and lincosamide so guys enterococcus becomes a very important class of microorganism to deal with so if it is faecalis then i told you ampicillin is drug of choice if it is fascium then i go for vancomycin right i target d alanin that becomes my drug of choice in case there is ampicillin resistance in faecalis again i go for vancomycin if there is vancomycin resistance then my drug of choice becomes linezolid right and i can also use daptomycin daptomycin is not fda approved so the drug of choice is linezolid right next class of microbe which have intrinsic resistance um to cephalosporins these are listeria so why listeria we cannot use cephalosporins the reason being as listeria has a penicillin binding protein that is similar to enterococcus so cephalosporins they have a structure because of which they do not have affinity for the penicillin binding protein of either listeria or enterococcus right 
and finally so guys one more thing here that you know that whenever we have meningitis for any kind of meningitis h influenza meningococcal cephalosporins are wonderful drugs one meningitis where they are not effective is listeria because they cannot bind to the penicillin binding protein the last uh, two we'll discuss here one is gram negative guys you know that to enter into a gram negative uh, the lipopolysaccharide which is a complex structure in gram negatives it has small holes in it which are called as porins and to enter through those small holes i need drugs which are of small size so in a gram negative any drug which is a large size cannot enter into a gram negative and these are peptides yes peptides so peptides are large proteins so guys which are the antibiotics which have peptide in their name right you can make make a guess these are glycopeptides like vancomycin and lipopeptide like daptomycin so vancomycin daptomycin these are glycopeptide lipopeptide these are peptides which do not have any activity against gram negatives they are only active against gram positives like staphylococcus or streptococcus right finally guys the last one here is a microorganism like mycoplasma and remember mycoplasma which class of drug would not be effective or mycoplasma is intrinsically resistant to beta lactams now why is that the reason being mycoplasma does not have a cell wall yes mycoplasma does not have a cell wall and beta lactams they act by inhibiting cell wall synthesis so if there is no cell wall how are you going to act so mycoplasma none of the beta lactam drugs be it penicillin cephalosporins or carbapenems none of these can be used All right guys so this was my aim here today to dis- discuss some of these important intrinsic mechanism of resistance in my next form cast i'll discuss about the acquired mechanisms of resistance right so at last guys uh, um, a student had asked me sir i have uh, not scored well in uh, ini sat not scored well means i am in the horizon of 5000 to 10000 rank and what are my chances of getting a, a seat or getting a rank within 2000 in the uh, neat exam guys i would like to tell a- any any of you guys who are in the ranks of 3000 4000 5000 8000 10000 you guys have a very high probability of making it in, into under 2000 in the neat exam the only thing you need to do is not lose hope right and keep continuing your revision the way you have planned it because you will see that with adequate revisions right in these last uh, few days your, um, your your rank might change drastically so guys whenever you look at um, let us say uh, a race of 1000 meter race I know that whenever I go for a 1000 or 4000 meter race uh, what happens with the runners they begin slow right they begin slow but as soon as they go to the last lap and there is a remaining 100 meters or 200 meters they they will drastically change their speed right and they will go for the kill now you are in the in, in that segment now you are uh, left with only 100 or 200 meters of race and you need to run as fast as possible with all the energy that you have got in yourself so this is the time when you cannot relax right and you need to keep saying to yourself that why i started this i started this because i need to finish it and i need to finish it in time and get the rank that i deserve right you'll get that rank guys the only thing you need to do is you need to uh, hold yourself together in these times second doubt a student asked me and he said that sir i am not able to study now because i have a kind of uh, pseudo confidence that i have got a rank under 2000 like a 1500 ish or 1600 ish rank and i i have automatically assumed that i am going to get the same rank in the neat pg and get my branch of choice guys it does not happen like that it's a different exam it's a different day so the all together the output might be different and what can make it worse is if you do not continue the hard work others will take over the seat so you might have got a 1500ish or 1600ish rank in ini sat but if you don't study you might go to 15000 or even 16000 rank guys take it from me guys so you need to keep the hard work up and uh, does not matter what is the situation just 
uh, some days more guys and you'll be out of these you'll be out of this torture and see at last whatever happens right you you might get an mdms seat if not you might you might get a diploma if not at least you'll get a dnb seat right so whatever comes your way grab with both hands and move on in life right ranks will not decide how successful you are going to be in your clinical practice in your clinical practice it does not even matter are you an mdms or diploma or dnb you might struggle in the beginning but what happens is after 2 to 3 years how you carry forward your career it all depends upon how you present yourself to the patients how you treat them what are you, what are your social skills what are your entrepreneurial skills right how you develop yourself and um, so guys that's all for today and uh, again uh, i'll con- conclude with a happy independence day to all of you guys a uh, lot of lots of love and blessings to all of you and uh, hold tight guys in this last few days before the exam don't lose hope right guys you'll make it just keep believing in yourself guys that's all guys thank you bye bye take care this was dr ranjan with you